So we're here with the lovely Moana Leilua, but I will actually get her to do a proper introduction. Can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Mālo lovely sifu mā malangi mama. O lo ingo fa mo ana leilu o lo tama e sa o mai fusi sa fuku la fai sa le longa o lo tina le fa le va fa le fa. So my name is mo ana leilu. I am the Rupa Player Development Manager uh, for the Melbourne Rebels, and yeah. Can you tell us what you're actually here for? And a really great announcement that we've just recently heard from you from World Rugby. Uh, Yes, uh, so this uh, tomorrow we're actually playing Moana Pacifica, part of the cultural heritage round uh, for Super Rugby Pacific. Um, and uh, last night, uh, World Rugby actually announced, I guess, a Cap Gemini Woman in Rugby Leadership Scholars and happened to be one of the 12 uh, worldwide, which is really, really exciting. So I'll be representing uh, Oceania region uh, together with a sister from Tonga and uh, Australia. Yeah, so really, really excited about this 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 particular opportunity yeah for those who aren't um, aware of what the program actually is for the 12 months can you just shed a little bit of light as to what the opportunity is like for yourself with world rugby um, yes, so I've got, um, I guess, governance aspirations and uh, part of the scholarship is that we get a, a pool of funding to be able to assist with professional development. So I'm really going to focus on governance. Uh, we have access to a like a leadership mentor and I've been quite intentional in actually asking for someone from the Northern Hemisphere who's not in rugby, so I'm looking forward to meeting uh, him or her over the next couple of months. Uh, we also have access to Cap Gemini as a... Um, is an IT organisation and so they have links to Harvard Business so we will be uh, getting access to a platform that allows us to do some further education within um, within the Harvard Business School uh, as well as being able to meet the other 11 uh, hopefully in September October in Paris just at Cap Gemini's uh, La Fontaine campus that's just outside of Paris. Yeah so that I think if, if anything I'm really excited about being able to get some further education through the platform that they have, the mentorship, but even more so being able to meet these amazing mahini, amazing women uh, that have also secured the scholarship because I think they all come from all walks of life and so I think I can learn a lot from them as well. And what was like your first reaction when you actually got told the news? Because it's a, a massive achievement. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie, I cried. Um, really overwhelming. I put a lot of effort into the application and to see something come through and be acknowledged for it. Um, yeah, it was really, really special. Um, I haven't wanted anything like I've wanted this. Yeah, and so for it to come to fruition, because I knew it was really was going to be an opportunity for me to um, be able to do some things that I probably wouldn't have been able to do without the support of the scholarship. And so I think that's what I'm really excited about. And I know that whatever I do will naturally assist the village and the, the people that I serve. So um, the hope is to be able to use the, the scholarship to elevate certain parts of what I do now so that I can, A, yes, um, be able to achieve some of my goals, but then also be able to bring others along the journey with me. Yeah. And what are you wanting to try and get out of the program? Like, I mean, you've got extensive work um, here in Aotearoa, New Zealand, but I almost feel like you've been flying yeah. over in Nam in Melbourne, in Australia with yes. your work. Um, what is it that you actually want to take out of it from this, you know, 12 month scholarship? Hmm. I think if anything, it's, um, yes, the networking, but also it'll allow me access into places and spaces that I don't think that I would have been able to access myself and so I think that's going to be amazing in terms of um, I guess my step, next steps professionally which I don't know what it is I really am leaning into whatever this whatever comes my way and this is a, an amazing opportunity that I know that I'm not going to take for granted um, and now um, I've been really overwhelmed with all the messages uh, since the announcement last night and so I think it's it's um, now, when we think about the things that we do, I think you had messaged me um, about it, that it's um, it's about our ancestors. It's re we really are living out the dreams of our ancestors, and I, I that's a privilege. Um, my dad is now an ancestor, and so it's being able to, to continue to um, live out the legacy and my family's legacy here at Earthside in this space, which is a very unique space for a Pacifica or a Samoan woman to be, in, especially in rugby union and in Australia. Um, but I'm here for it. I'm, I've got the shoulders for it. So, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You touched on that basically that point then. The importance of actually having, um, you know, Pacifica people in mm. roles of, you know, 
po positions of power yeah. um, and in decision making roles how important is it then to see and be someone like yourself in these kinds of spaces yeah hmm. um, to be honest i i don't see myself as a role model i'm just doing me <laughs> and i know but i know that that's um i get told that all the time but i think um we provide a really unique dynamic in the, who we are the blood that runs through our veins is, is strong and it's powerful um, and i think for too long yes we are the the uh, i guess we are on the field, we need to get some of our people really represented off the field. Um, but I think that who we are and what we bring to the table, and even when I think about my ancestors, I've got um, on my dad's side, my ancestors were involved in Mawapule and Savai. And so the advocacy and um, being able to really advocate for what is right, we can actually do that in the boardrooms. Um, who says that we can't? And so I'm really excited about the opportunity to be able to Potentially, um, I'm going to speak it into existence to be able to, to to get into a room. And if I don't get out of room, I'll just make my own low low, to be honest. So um, it's um, it's our time to shine. And I think for, for too long that we've been underestimated and we've had a lot of people speak on our behalf. But we're in a position now where we're educated, which is what our parents wanted when they moved across the shores of Samoa to make Aotearoa home. Uh, and it's now, um, we're an extension of their migration journey. And I think that if... Now, if not you, then who? Um, and who am I to try and stop something that my ancestors had dreamed about for our people, eh? So um, the boardroom will be a new space. I don't know when that will happen. I pray that it happens soon, but I'm really um, excited about being a sponge over the next 12 months. I think our values uh, go a long way. I, I can't underestimate how important that the values that my parents have raised me in has actually really helped me in my roles and in the rooms that I've actually been in in Australia. Uh, I, th I think it's something different for them, which is not different for us. It's not novel for us, it's who we are. So um, yes, go back, back to your question, the importance of having Pacific people in those spaces is critical. Uh, we are, as uh, Dr. Lisa Upareza says, uh, just reading Gridiron Capital, uh, the critical mass um, uh, in, in the rugby union space. So now we need to bring that into other areas of rugby union, which to me is on the boards. Yeah. yeah. If anyone, like for those who are watching then, like and have, you know, a little bit of knowledge of what you've been able to achieve, if you could give them some advice on what kind of the skills or um, situations or experiences that they should try and get to help them potentially in these, you know, in rugby union, um, in any kind of code, what would it be? Like, what would you encourage them to actually do to be able to set themselves up to get them to this kind of position? Um, a, a strong work ethic, um, that goes without saying, and uh, really being... Um, uh, open to new things, even the things that might not uh, feel feel will make you feel real uncomfortable. Um, volunteerism. So my kind of um, journey into actually working off field started in the volunteer space. So I volunteered in uh, Counties Monaco Sevens and Counties Monaco Heat for a few seasons, and then that. Um, because of my work ethic that was um, acknowledged by way of being offered a role as the county's Monaco Steelers team manager, so a paid role. So I found that don't underestimate those that the time that you give up to give back to the game or give back to whatever it is. Um, if you do well, the, um, the accolades will come. Um, and what was really important for me, I had a really amazing tribe that supported me along the way because it, it can get a bit lonely, um, I'm not going to lie, because if you're, if you're the only one and you're going first, you get all the hits and so um and you're you have to take the hits so that the the ones coming behind you don't and so that that for me has been a huge learning curve and i had really great support systems in my in my siblings and my mum um and then also my friends both in Aotearoa and in Nam in australia that have helped me get through some really kind of dark times um so i think that that is really key and also just make sure that if you uh, that you're grounded uh, because it can easily get away with you when you uh, get into some into some spaces and into some roles. Um, I think that, that that those will probably be the things that kind of come to mind at the moment. Yeah. Cool. I think that's actually all we've got, like in terms of questions. We just wanted to say thank you so much for actually no, joining okay. us um, on the show because we, like I said, you're doing amazing things in thank the spaces you. that you are, and you're definitely an inspiration for all of us. So thank, thank you. you so much for joining <laughs> us today. <laughs> I should say, also, does your scholarship get you to Paris? <laughs>
Uh, parts of it. <laughs> I'm just excited to go to Paris. Yes, I will be uh, going like into September, October, get to meet the other scholars, um, which I'm really excited about. But also just being part, you know, Cap Gemini is the main partner of the program. So being able to, to see what they do, um, especially around, they've got a real heart for um, elevating women. So yeah, I'm all for that. Yeah. <laughs>